We are back tonight with my first guest on Monterey on tonight, and it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce to you and our audience out there. He's been here before. Yes. The one, the only, <laughs> Mr. Bert Catino. Hi, everybody. It's great to be on Gary's show again, and I was really nice that he asked me again, and I don't know what we're going to be talking about because oh, you, you never tell me. We, so you know what? That's well, the best part of doing the, the show. Yeah, exactly right. We just fly off just and fly go off see where and it ends go up. Go where we're going to go, and I think that's great, and it's really great. And that's why it's so much fun to have you here. You know, now if you don't know this, yes, out there in TV land, this man and his partner Ted Baldestreri started the Sardine Factory, probably the most well-known restaurant right here on the Monterey Peninsula, down on Cannery Row. October 2nd, 1968, we opened the doors. Wow. Yeah, little little place down there and really not much that was down on Cannery Row. Cannery Row is dilapidated, gone. <laughs> it was Fishing all the industry, old gone. canneries, right? The canneries were left empty, and uh, we took a chance down there, and uh, we had a Dr. Caselli that uh, helped us out a little bit that was part of the partnership at the time. And uh, I was in the kitchen, and my partner was out front, and we were a team, and we're still a team today, actually, Isn't that amazing? with other things all that we get years. involved in all these years. But uh, we had a lot of fun through the years. We've had all kinds of different interesting people have come through the door. Oh, have they? Uh, celebrities. Wow. Uh, you know, Clint still comes in. You know, Does Clint. He? Yeah, Clint. Uh, you know, Clint made that movie Play Misty for me and shot that scene down there. You know, I was kind of excited about that all happening naturally, but I thought for sure I'd have the opportunity to feed the crew. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Well, that didn't happen. They actually brought their own bus and feed because of union and all oh, that other my stuff. Oh, goodness. So you I, couldn't give them any food. I couldn't give them any food. But, uh, you know, they, they shot that, and it took about a two-week deal going through that because— uh, the fellow who played the bartender was yeah. named Don Siegel. He was a director. At two, that, that's all he did was direct movies. All he was a, he wasn't an actor. He'd never been an actor He'd until Clint put actor. him in the movie. And Clint, well, this is the first movie that Clint was making with his own program that's, when that's he right. started Malposa. That was his company. And, uh, you know, I guess he was working on a little shoestring there and uh, trying to get some local people involved. And, and anyway, uh, what was kind of funny, he kept flubbing the lines, you know? <laughs> and Clint says, oh, you got to say it like this. Uh, start over. <laughs> start over again. But, uh, you know, finally the thing was shot. But there was one thing that really bothered my partner even more than me. You ever see a bartender with an ascot? Yeah, he had that ascot on. You know, yeah. so we're trying to tell Clint, you know, a tie, white shirt, you yeah. know. We had, like a bartender. Bar like a bartender. Yeah. We, we had red red coats at that time and did he wear the, the red coat he wore the red coat ah. that one thing he did but he told clint he's not taking that ascot out <laughs> that was <laughs> so him. if you see the movies where you know what's interesting we were talking i was talking with arlene earlier too mm -hmm. about what happens in the past here on uh, the monterey peninsula play misty for me right. was the first film Mm -hmm. That was made by Clint, yes. his first directorial debut, debut, as they say. Correct. And he decided to do it down on Cannery Row and came to you guys mm -hmm. and wanted to use the restaurant in the movie. He wanted to use the restaurant in the movie. What he liked about it, of course, is our bar. Ah. We have this old bar that actually came around the horn. And we were fortunate to pick this bar up because it was up for auction. It, it, it had a story. There. It had a story behind it. Uh, it was a Brunswick bar, and it was very specifically designed. And uh, and you still have it today. Oh, the bar is still there for sure. But it fits like a glove where we put it. And but what's interesting about it, uh, my partner went to that. I was I was still working in the kitchen, so he went to this auction, and uh, you couldn't see the bar. It what? was it was all it was all packed up, oh, and you a had box. a you had a bid on it the way it was. Oh, Take it God. as it is. So somebody bid a hundred dollars, and my partner bid a hundred and sixty dollars, and we got the bar. You got the bar for hundred sixty. A hundred and sixty dollar bar. Thank God, because we didn't have money really to pay more than that for a bar. And, and it's still there today. It's still there now. What's interesting about the bar? As we unlo you know unloaded it and did yeah. all the things we did, just put it in the place. 
And all of a sudden, on the front of the bar, we see this compass. There's a compass built into the bar. A compass? Now, how could that be? Where did this compass thing come from? We didn't know. I mean, I didn't know where the bar came from. And interesting, after the restaurant was open and a while later, uh, I remember a Mr. Bruno who had a bar downtown in Monterey. Oh. I went to school with his daughter. And I was thinking maybe this was the bar that he had in his place. So I called her up. And she says, oh, yeah, my father used to have that bar, but who knows where that bar is now, Bert? Well, maybe it's a place (laughs) you may know where. I I think it's in my restaurant. We bought it. And she says, what makes you think that? I says, well, Marie, I says, it has a compass in it. She says, that's That's my father's bar. That's it. She says, see, that bar was on a commercial ship years ago. Oh. Those were their first cruise ships in reality. Wow. They take, maybe they have about eight or nine rooms on a boat like that, and they bring people on there, and they'd have a bar on these old ships. And there you needed a compass to know which direction the a, ship was going. <laughs> well, you need a compass to know which way you're drinking, too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's quite a conversation piece for years in the restaurant. You know, after 55 years, people still come in and say, What are you doing with a compass in the, the bar? What is the compass doing in the bar? But, uh, it, it really is something, of course, we're not going to take it out. We're going to sort of oh leave goodness. it there because it is a conversation piece. Oh, a conversation know. piece. Yeah, and and that, much front, so. that front room, yes. as you walk in the door, right. that was all there was to the sardine factory at the very beginning, That's correct? exactly. Yeah, well, you know, we didn't have enough money to go too much further in reality. <laughs> and, of course, you know, uh, th- there was houses around there. You know, there was really nothing else out there. We didn't even have a parking lot for that matter. And uh, we worked on that place, and uh, we got it going. We kept the ceiling was originally the same, and and we just went from there, you know. And and all we can think of how we can make this restaurant better each day, and we worked very hard on it. He and I, day and night, whatever whatever it took. We were serving lunch in those days, mm-hmm. and uh, and and it started to come. But then. What happened, we did have a tragic situation. Uh Uh-oh, tell us about that. And I must tell you about it. So it seems like, you know, that was a rough area, Canary Row, and uh, this group broke into the building. We're just going to hook up the alarm system. (laughs) And they broke in before the alarm. Yeah, and they broke in, and they broke into one of the refrigerators, and they took out this crack crab, and all of a sudden they decided to have a party while they were drinking. And what they did is they put tables and chairs together in the center of the dining room, uh-huh. they started a bonfire. Oh, no. And all of a sudden, the place is burning. And, of course, the fire department's coming down. Everybody's coming down. And our family, you know, my mother and Ted's mother, everyone would come down there. And How you know, bad was it? It was pretty bad. Pretty it closed bad? us. It closed, closed us. Yeah. How long did you have to uh, stay well, closed? Well, we were, we were closed over a month because what we had to do was, first of all, Look at the insurance. Ah. And I can tell you something. Business interruption is a great thing to have. But don't think they're going to give you the money up front. Ah. When you open up, they give you the money. But so, we needed the money uh, in advance to, to, to do replace the repairs, repairs oh, and all the other stuff. Goodness. And, and uh, you know, my mother Is was, that part in your book? About yeah. that oh, happening? Yeah. Oh, it yeah. Our, our book we have. Yeah, yeah. that was interesting. We have, we the have a fire book. at the sardine fire factory. Fire at the sardine factory. And we just after we opened. And uh, anyway, uh, my partner and I looked at the situation. And now we're thinking of how could we expand the restaurant? <laughs> <We> Is <laughs> that when the expansion came? That's when the expansion no came. No kidding. So we have the fireplace in that main room. Yeah. And right behind the fireplace was outside. Uh-huh. So what we could think of, maybe we can add a few more tables by extending the restaurant. Ah. And that's exactly what so we did. So is that the, now the captain's table room? No, that's the alcove area. Oh, that's the alcove. Before the captain's room. Oh. And then we had uh, where our wine cellar is upstairs, yep. you've, you've seen. Yep. Yep. Uh, in the wine cellar, that was our storage room for oh, wine see. and liquor. Of course, that wouldn't suffice today. Uh, <laughs> we got we got thousands of bottles of well, wine. Well, you, you actually went downstairs, too, and did the basement, didn't you? Yes. After we did the captain's room, and we wanted something more elegant. 
and the captain's room is more elegant. It is an elegant room. It has room, original right. antiques for the 1906 it's earthquake beautiful, at San Francisco. Sort of a that's French. behind the first dining room behind the main room. That's correct. And then and then and then you went and built the observatory. Yeah. Now this conservatory, conservatory. as it was called, right. a conservatory. There was another idea. Now the fellow who helped us with all this design was Roy Amy Hamlin, and he had an antique shop on Cannery Row. Uh-huh. But he worked Look for, at this. But he worked for 20th Century Fox oh, he at did. one time. So is that where he got the idea? Put that back up, Dylan. That's yeah, such yeah. a beautiful yeah, it's room. It's a beautiful room. And he painted that. Like he painted the first room. Like he painted the captain's room. And like he painted that room. Oh, my goodness. Now, that seats about 100 people in that room. Uh-huh. All glass. You can walk on that glass. Do you get people that say, I only want to sit in that room? Oh, yes. You do. Well, we do have people want to sit in the captain's room. Some people still want to sit in the front room really but uh they have the favorites of what what they want and at night you know it oh. kind of lights up where you're looking up at the stars there and it's we a, have lights on the outside around it fabulous so it gives room. it a yeah, really nice it's beautiful ambience, ambience. you know ambience. Beautiful. so now we're we're, we're going to do this conservatory room and i i told my partner i said i must be crazy doing something <laughs> what we're going to do but we wanted something more different and unique than yes. what we had before. Yes. We thought that would be a draw for it the restaurant. It is. It's fabulous. So, it's the only place that I know of that's anything like that. That's right. Well, you right? know, the Tavern on the Green in New York had that kind of a motif, oh, had did. that kind of a thing. Oh, okay. And Mervyn Leroy came to our restaurant and told us, well, you guys copied me. <laughs> oh, he thought well, not really. Off, we didn't right? copy him at all. I mean, I've never been there. But uh, we ended up uh, putting a room downstairs. We wanted to do a storage room. You know, in the meantime, we did accumulate other restaurants, as you know. Yeah. Then, you know, we had the butcher shop in Carmel. And then we, so we started kind of spreading out a little yeah, bit. Branching out. Branching out. And things were going so well for us. We were very fortunate, I have to say. And you know what made you guys famous, too, was the American Express commercial. Yes, yes. They had the American Express commercial. It was a wonderful thing. And, you know, things like that, that really brought business into the restaurant. But we have a new thing that's bringing business into now? the restaurant. Now? Now. Tell us what it is. We just received the Gold Dorona Award. Gold Dorona, Dorona Award? Distinguished Restaurants of North America. Oh Dorona. Dorona. And they never had a gold award. They always had a regular award, which we've been, you know, in that for many years. And, you know, you can't just get this award. In other words, you say, well, I want that award. Yeah, no. They, they come to. and inspect you anonymously uh-huh. and anonymously. prove that you can really be who you are. Uh-huh. So they came out with this gold Dorona Award. And my partner and I were real surprised to see that all of a sudden we got this award. They notified us. One out of 17 in the country. Oh. So... Uh, Bert, we were, that's amazing. That was, that was really amazing. And this is all right now. We just got it. Uh, you know. 2024. Folks, if you're out there in TV land, you have now the opportunity to come over here to Canry Row right. and go to the Sardine Factory. And it's one of 17 Teen restaurants in the country. And they wow. list them all. And interesting restaurants, some really great restaurants, and we're very proud oh, that, that we goodness. have we yes. have that award. We won many awards in the restaurant. You know, uh, Gary, to keep a restaurant going after fifty-five years, it takes a continual effort. Oh, I can imagine, and that's why we have to be on top of it. You know, yeah. uh, I got to say, fortunately, right now we have a great chef. His name is Benjamin Brandt. He came aboard with us. I got to meet him. Yeah, you got to meet him. Very talented. I got a tour of the kitchen. You got a tour of the kitchen. (laughs) We open for tours of the kitchen anytime you want. (laughs) And uh, and we make sure the kitchen is clean, 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 clean. clean. Tell me how much that dishwasher costs. Uh, (laughs) $40,000. Can you imagine a dishwasher for $40,000? And the one who's running it, you know, is usually someone who I go back all the time and say hello to because he's operating the most expensive piece of equipment in that restaurant. (laughs) But eventually, you know, we end up putting downstairs in that conservatory, we added a room. We were going to really do a storage room, but we needed room for wine. You know, my partner and I, were him especially, you know, he... He loved wine. He, my partner... He did a great job with the wine. He took care of that. 
and we've got a very successful wine list. One was of the that top, his department? That or? was his word. That was his thing. I was he, I was in the soup, and he, he was out there down there in the wine. But he was this, out there hitting the wine. This room <laughs> that he's talking about downstairs. It, Look at this. It, it's the wine cellar. And you've had some dignitaries from all over the world you having them. dinner. You name a few. Come on. Well, tell us. my God, we had Jim Nance from CBS Sports. He brought and he all lives kinds here. of celebrities. Yes, lives Jim here. lives yeah, here. Yeah, and he brought a lot of celebrities down there. We had every Phil Mickelson for golf. We had Kenny G, Clint, of course, but different people at different times. But, you know, one thing is interesting, I have to tell you. Uh, we've had a lot of people who run for office have their dinner down there. That's a beautiful uh, You know, place. raising funds. Yeah, fundraiser. A fundraiser. And over the years, everyone that's had that won. Oh! So we don't have a loser yet. Ooh. The last time I remember was the mayor of Salinas, who was running for the mayor of Salinas, and she was down there, and I came out of the kitchen. I was actually cooking the dinner with, with my people, and I went right up to her, right in front of everybody. I said, now, look, it, you have to win. She says, what? I says, I says you can't you, break the streak. You stri- can't the break the streak. The the, she says, chef, I am going to win, and she did win. And she did And win. she's a wonderful lady. Wow, wow, wow. Well, and, that's a great story. Yes, it is on its own. Great and story. So, They're going to stand in line now <laughs> to want to have dinner their... downstairs there so they can win. But they better not break that, <laughs> that mistake <laughs> of it. So, so the room became, and you know, i got to tell you something else about the room downstairs. It was What's actually, the name of the room? What do you call it's it? It's called the Wine Cellar. Just call the Wine, the cellar, wine cellar. Downstairs Wine Cellar. At Sardine Factory. Yeah, and the Sardine Factory. And it seats about 28 people perfectly. And and there we play music with the food, you know, the wine. Yeah, yeah. So it's a white glove thing with tuxedo type service. Uh, it's got to be a little more unique. In yep. that sense, because yep. it's all special menus and special everything that has to be now, done. Now, how hard is it to book that room for a special occasion? Not hard at all. As long as it's uh, not being used, you can how book it. How many people can you seat? 28. 28 max. people. Yeah. There you go. You yeah. want to have a wedding party? You want to have a political event? Oh, yeah. We have, we have, I mean, uh, people get married down there. We even had that. Uh, it's just a room with a lot of aviance and it's now beautiful. one more time dylan let's yeah, put that show it again up. Show that, that. you know the wine it's, cellar it's is such a beautiful room it, it's unique in itself look at this and that was built and that's the wine cellar right behind yeah the wine cellar to the left as our left and then of course there's all the seating and it shows the set, set up mm-hmm. and then you got a chandelier there you know, all these are antique things. Beautiful. And uh, uh, we have original Hewitt painting. You can't see it. It's on the right side. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and this was designed by the same person who designed the restaurant. We didn't have wow. architect. We had wow. just a man painting a picture. And Somebody we just follow that in picture. in here a second. Let me interrupt yes. you for just a second. Sure. This is Monterey on tonight. Hello, this is Teeny Shake. Oh, wait a minute. Teeny Shake. Teeny Shake. You mean the Teeny Shake that I, I know? Chef Teeny Shake? <laughs> I, I, I heard there's a celebrity there tonight on there, and I was just calling in to uh, uh, say hello. <laughs> oh, Teeny, you're wonderful. Hi, Teeny. How are you? I'm doing really well. I, I, it's, uh, you know, you got the, the, the most famous uh, uh, <laughs> chef on the peninsula here and beyond. Um, well, you learned a little bit from this guy, didn't you, Teeny? Well, I'll tell you what, it's a little bit tough tonight uh, to, to talk because uh, personally we could talk for hours. I know you don't have that much time, but <laughs> I do have to recognize that, that I got two of my favorite guys on the other side. Uh, of course, Burkettino, Chef Bert, and then Gary Coca-Cola. Uh Burkettino, you know, has inspired me so much in my cooking uh, ability and to be educated and uh, to uh, learn more about finer foods and and things that, you know, it, it really is his inspiration on the professional side uh, has been greater in my life than anybody. And on the other side of it, uh, your, your your host tonight, Bert, uh, Gary Coca-Cola, yes. uh, he's the one that made me famous on television. He's the man that did it. He's the man that can do it. He's, he's definitely he, the he, one He really did. did you know? Thank you, Teeny. Uh, now, you know, this guy. And, yeah. And, and we, it was amazing what happened as a result of that. We, yeah. d- we did that uh, Coastal Cuisine with That's Teeny right. when I first That's met right. Teeny. That's when right. I first got to the Monterey Peninsula. 
put his show on in Fresno. He did a daily yes. strip show. That's right. For a half hour. Mm -hmm. And I told him when we put the show on, I said, now you're going to get people coming over from the San Joaquin Valley, Teeny, that are going to want your autograph. Yeah. That's right. And they're going to want to take a picture with, with you because you're a famous chef now. Yeah, you're on TV. You're a celebrity <laughs> chef. You, you know, when I was on the Food Channel... Uh, with Bobby Flay came to my house and they wanted uh, a woman that worked at the cannery. The only one I could think of was my mother-in-law at the time, was 85 <laughs> years old. And I asked her, I says, Mom, I says, you know, they want to have uh, a woman on TV. I explained everything to her. She says, okay. And I says, look at now, you got to be on TV. Yeah. So you got to watch how you say and you this and watch that. what well, you she, say. She was kind of a very direct woman, but she was a wonderful, wonderful cook. And I'll tell you something, up until the 90s, she could still cook for 20 people. Wow. So we, we, we did a show with Bobby Flay at my house in my outdoor kitchen at the time, which I've done shows there before. And... Uh, I got to tell you one funny aspect of it. So now it comes the time I'm cooking and I'm doing scamp and I'm doing all this other stuff. And after he's finished talking to me, he goes over to her and he says, okay, Nance, her name is Nancy Mangiapane. Uh Mangiapane means eat bread. Oh, wow. <laughs> but That's she's, right. Yeah, but she, they're Sicilian and my wife's mother is a, was a dynamite lady. So uh, Bobby has, okay, Nance, tell me what you're going to do. Well, she's going to do a stuffed calamari dish. Better known, she says squid, but they say calamari. 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 So anyway, oh, that's 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 good. So what are you going to do? She says, well, I'm going to take this and I'm going to stuff it. And she's going through the whole, perfectly doing the whole process, yeah. right? I was so proud of her that she was coming across like crazy. And all of a sudden, she says, there's only one problem. He says, what's the problem? These are too small for stuffing. <laughs> They weren't oh. big enough. <laughs> I was about to say cut. He says, no, we love that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Teeny is also, uh, you know, he's working real estate these days. That's right. You know, he's a very versatile individual. And, you know, maybe some other thing you know about Teeny, but, you know, he was actually a pastor. You know, I didn't he, know he, that, yeah, Teeny. He went through that. He went through, you know. He's a man, He's of, a man of all seasons. Yes, a man of all seasons. And I, and I really have a high respect for him. He and his brothers, I remember his father very well. He told me, Bert, you know, if something ever happens to me, I want you to take care of my boys. Yeah. I says, well, Mr. I said, Mr. Shake, I says, I, I don't know what you mean. He says, well, you know, I got six more, you know, I want to make sure they're all going to do I'll the right do thing. Good. And you got to keep them straight. Yeah. And I remember these little guys running around. And, and he was the and little he, one. And he was the little one. And Teeny has always been very gracious. He's been very respectful. And I regard him very much for his talent. Well, Teeny. Well, well I appreciate that. You know, you Bert, are, I, it has true. been uh, something that our family, you know, Gary and the, uh, the Italian mob, they, and the Italian mob, they have a... Uh, uh, a uh, advisor called his consigliere, and that's, <laughs> that's what Bird has been to our family. Uh, every one of my brothers is consigliere. Consigliere, and, <laughs> and uh, you know for things, and and he's always been there for us. You know, ever since we were kids, and and still today, you know, still we call him for advice and direction and guidance, and and uh, there's always a lot of wisdom there. Well, you know, that's what happens as you get older in life. You get a lot of wisdom. And people are coming to me now because I'm a lot older. That's right. When you get older, wisdom. they come to you. But I got to tell you something. You know who's got a lot of wisdom? His mom. Ah. How old is your mother? Tell him. Uh, almost 92 years Ooh. old. And, you know, your your mother, my mother, they were, they were two, two of the same. Uh, uh, you know, Isabella. Both Isabella. Both Isabella. And Isabella. my mother was named Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Teeny, thank you for yeah. calling in. What an honor to thank have you, you on the show tonight. Thank this you, Teeny. Great. We got to have you back on, Teeny. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, we could talk for hours about Burkettino uh, and all that he has done. I, I just want to say quickly, you know, that not only locally is he so respected, but on the national level, I've had the opportunity to be at some of the national chef conventions with Bert, and they he has so much respect. Uh, from all the top presidents and leaders and uh, has done more for anybody that I know of uh, in the nation for the culinary industry and chef, uh, Burkettino, more than anybody I know. And, and he's respected so much at the national level. It's just incredible. So 
Uh, thank you for allowing me to call in. Thank you, Teeny, for you, calling. Teeny, nice you're surprise. Wonderful. I love yeah. you dearly. So the both of you, thank you. We'll talk later. Thank All you, right. buddy. Tell thank you, you so much. God bless. <laughs> What a what a nice surprise! What a nice surprise! Yeah, that me, that young wonderful. man when I am young man because it yeah. was eighteen years ago I yeah. got here, yeah. and he was doing that show. That's and right. I told him, I said, "Teeny, that show could be national. It really was a well yes. show. Coastal cuisine with Chef Teeny Shake." Yeah. Well, Bert, we got to run because okay. it's been a great interview with you here tonight. Well, it's so you. nice having you. Great stories. And you know what? We're going to book you on a regular basis oh. to get you back here because <laughs> the stories are so great. Where do you get stories uh, like this? Yeah, well, I hope I don't run out. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> hey, you keep taking notes. Keep taking notes. Keep taking notes <laughs> so you can come back. And I mean, I learned so much tonight about how that sardine factory came to yeah. be. Thank and that's you. all brand new stuff on the show. Uh, yes, I never yes. had heard it before. Okay. Anyway, thank you, Bert. Thank you, Gary. I really Thank appreciate you, you appreciate being here. It. It's so nice to have you. Thank and, you for having an me. honor. And so uh, we're going to get back now to the guy that's playing over at the Sunset Center tonight, ah. Van Morrison. We're going to get back to his concert. And guess what? It's all free here. That's right. It don't cost nothing. <laughs> Dylan, take it away. All right.